Good morning, folks. Exciting slate of news up today that manages to hit most of our top fields of coverage. You're watching plasma filaments dance out of view with the solar rotation, so let's begin at spaceweathernews.com and we find the last day on our star was relatively quiet. Those shifting dark regions in the central disk are not true coronal holes, just gaps in the field structure and low plasma density in the low latitude corona. Polar regions are housing the real coronal holes. The bright point just south of the equator is that active region that went into decay about 36 hours ago. It does remain crackling, but without proper sunspots, the larger flaring will remain absent. Solar wind has been slowing for three days. Even in purple on the right, the hump upwards didn't take us out of normal range, and all is calm in Earth's magnetic field this morning. I want to mention that another blood echo earthquake struck deep beneath Romania with propagation potential southward to the major faults. And we're south of that, a major low is brewing in Egypt. That level storm is usually reserved for their summer months, likely to be flash flood reports from the region, and there is an increased seismic alert at those faults nearby. Hottest water on Earth right now sits around northern Australia. This is why the only two cyclonic systems on the planet are at its northern coastlines. Fair amount of power to those systems. Let's get a closer look at global greening. We have been sharing those releases, and here they've zoomed way in on Yellowstone to demonstrate the change seen in growing season. Now, while the article is about buffalo territory and how the data help them manage the herds, the greening also tells a clear story of the changes ongoing. This planet is getting greener. Up next, we've got SRTM topography with Landsat 8 imagery laying over top of it. The zoom in and flyover animation of the South Georgia Islands is part of the data and observation combination pathway they are using to take their remote sensing of atmospheric and ground-based data points and turn them into something useful, or in this case, just something very, very pretty. Up next, just about the most miserable planet I can think of, where it rains molten iron. Sitting about 640 light years away, a little skip through our local galaxy, WASP-67 sits hosting a fierce planet that is tidally locked with that parent star, where the sunlight heating vaporizes even the metal, and where it travels to the night side of the planet, it then condenses, cools, and drops as that iron rain. But truly, we've got more than enough objects in our own solar system to study, and that number keeps getting bigger. Hundreds of new trans-Neptunian objects have been discovered. The Dark Energy Survey team was in on this one, and it's very nice to see them hunting something real. This is just a little slice of the sky surveyed where those hundreds of newly discovered minor planets sit anywhere from just outside Neptune's orbit to about twice the distance of Pluto. Up next, Nova. And this time, we're not investigating the tinier Nova they are getting better at spotting. This would be one of the bigger ones. 10 to the 51 ergs of energy released here is just a power of 10 from the largest we've ever seen, which puts it in about the top 3 to 5% of all Nova themselves. Up next, the meltwater pulses during deglaciation make modern sea level rise look like a complete joke. They are now finding new evidence of one of the latest from the end of the last ice age about 11,000 years ago. And folks, this meltwater pulse is what Dr. Robert Schock has described on our channel as being the potential result of the ice age ending in just days. He's even convinced Randall Carlson to look at the sun on that one. The melt pulse came as fast as the Younger Dryas did, potentially overnight in geologic terms. In addition to the cyclical isotope, magnetic field excursion, biosphere extinction, and cold earth event, we tend to see the major warm-up occur just as fast as the cold thereafter. If you have watched our catastrophe series and noticed that it seems like Dr. Schock and Dr. Peratt are describing different disasters than Carlson, Vogt, Dunning, and myself, it's probably because there is a delivery of cold and then an equally powerful delivery of heat that pulls us back out. The point is that we've got confirmational evidence here today of the heating event that ended the Younger Dryas as quickly as it began. Now last but not least, we're going out to the cosmos. This is what happens when you get an open-minded international team of physicists, including one who holds simultaneous positions at two of the top ten universities on Earth. Honesty sneaks through, and the cold dark matter model must fall. These guys are going to have a whale of a time getting this one into a major journal, at least in the next few years. But nowadays, here on the preprint archive, you can make a big statement. And speaking of statements, 
What if I told you dozens of professors have agreed to be interviewed on this topic, that it's already happened? What if I told you the classified work at National Labs has already proven the truth of plasma cosmology and the non-existence of dark matter? What if we went through a painful and sometimes terrifying process of gaining permission to have the first release of previously classified information on this topic? It's called Plasma Cosmology. It's free to watch here on YouTube and in the description box right below the video, you can find a link to watch it. It's truth, changes the climate story, explains pre-seismic electromagnetic anomalies, and leads to the inevitable conclusion that Earth's catastrophe cycle is inflicted by forces at the galactic level, if not beyond. But without the foundation, it all falls apart, and that foundation is plasma cosmology. Folks, we greatly appreciate your support. Tickets for our August 2020 conference in Denver are coming back as a few cancellations continue to roll in. If you know you can't make it, you already have tickets, or that you will be too scared of a tiny pathogen, please let us know so we can fill your spot. Unless legally constrained, the conference will take place. By the way, those pathogens don't really have an answer for summer. Just wait for the sun to do its thing and we'll be on the other side of this by July. We've got your wind map forecast and shots of our star to close. And of course, we'll do this all again tomorrow. Right here, but right now, it's 4.20 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone.